Hey everybody, uh, got another video here. I'm gonna try to keep it as brief as possible. Uh, but uh, I do wanna talk about uh, how to keep from sucking the life out of your bow. Uh, one of the ways to do that. And what I mean by that is, uh, I, I've seen it uh, numerous times, either helping other other folks uh, uh, with their with their own bows uh, and things like that or or whatever just just and watching other people and things like that and I've actually experienced it myself some uh, years ago I figured out pretty quickly uh, that uh, no matter what string material you use okay uh, there there are little differences and little different nu nuances of, of uh, different string materials and things like that uh, no, I don't think there's like huge gains uh, as far as speed in, in between one string material or the other. Uh, there is some performance uh, things that, that are there as far as wear and tear on your string and things like that. Those are those are uh, definitely uh, things to consider when you if you're building strings yourself or you're buying a string for your for your bow. Um, uh, as I've said before in my other videos, I, I build my own strings. Um, I just have kind of the I have kind of a a little system that I use. It's nothing very scientific or anything like that. It's just after a long time of playing with different string materials and, and things like that, and, and a technique of building my string, which is not that hard. I mean, it, it's it's really not that hard to build your own strings if you if you take some time to learn how to do it. But the biggest thing is is, is sucking the life out of your bow. Uh, the the number one thing that people that leads people down that road of sucking the life out of their bow is the bow is loud uh, to them. Uh, what I mean is, is when they shoot the bow, it has a very uh, definite uh, bang or, or whack or something like that when they shoot the bow. Uh, or it makes a boing noise. Everybody, everybody's familiar with that noise right there. Um, I shoot a lot of my bows uh, without any kind of anything on the string. Uh, I, I have found over years and years and years that, uh, and trust me, I've done this. I, I've gotten one of my older sons or somebody like that to shoot their bow, and, and or shoot my bow even, and I've stood off to the side and compared the difference between one with sil with uh, uh, string silencers on it and one without, and. Um, to tell you the truth, and as many uh, times I've been out in the woods hunting and things like that, uh, it, it's it certainly doesn't hurt. I don't think to uh, to have string silencers on your string, but you can overdo that. And what I mean by that is, I I, I just helped a, a young fella uh, that's at the uh, RV park here where I'm where I'm working at, where I'm staying at right now uh, during during this job. And I had mentioned him in another video the other day, uh, or a week or so ago. He had a bow, and he brought it to me, and he said it was extremely loud. So he had put yarn on on this, you know, making uh, string silencers out of yarn, trying to quieten it down. And and he put Velcro and everything else. It was a recurve bow, but he had put uh, Velcro underneath the string and the string grooves and everything else. And it was an extraordinary to me. It was just way overkill as far as everything that he had tied on that string meaning uh he had a he had two string silencers and the bow was 60 inches long now and he had two uh balls of yarn on each one on each end and those balls of yarn were as big as my fist uh they were huge okay and then the velcro underneath the, the string itself and so on and so forth so i immediately knew something was wrong uh, if you have to, if you, if you have to tie uh, that much uh, stuff, whatever it is, whether it's yarn or cat whiskers or whatever you're using to, to and rubber, whatever silencers, chances are uh, there's a probably a problem with the tuning of your bow that that is that is causing a lot of the noise. Now it may not be causing all the noise because there's Bows naturally are going to have a sound when you shoot them, obviously, but there are ways to 
bring that noise down to a, a much more manageable level. And uh, I, I would, I, I've seen pictures, I've seen videos, uh, I've seen, you know, all these things uh, where people have sometimes have two uh, huge balls of yarn and then on the next, somebody else may have two on each end uh, trying to make their bow quieten down. Now, uh, more often than not, it's a, probably some type of recurve or something like that. And recurves, uh, you know, tend to be a little louder sometimes uh, uh, than, than uh, the long bows. But just because of the contact with the limbs, there's more contact on there. But I'm talking about long bows now here. So, uh, there are a few things that, that cause string noise to me. Aside from the, the obvious of shooting the bow is going to be, makes a noise anyway. Your bow is probably out of tune. And there are several things that, that you can do to tune your bow uh, to, to, to help with this, with this situation. Uh, number one, uh, your brace height may be too low or maybe too high. Uh, there, is, there is a sweet spot on every bow where the bow is as quiet as that bow will shoot, okay? Um, number two is probably is even a bigger problem uh, that I think a lot of people suffer from uh, is th they have the wrong arrow. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't matter if somebody wants to shoot carbon, aluminum, wood, whatever they want to shoot, I, I, I firmly, I can, I can tell you that a, an arrow that is too light for the bow will inherently cause a snap or a uh, bang or a whack when you shoot the bow because, in essence, what you're doing, if you're shooting an arrow, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm going to use an extreme example here. If you have a 65-pound longbow and you have... A carbon arrow that weighs 400 grains okay uh, you're doing a couple of things to your bow I don't care how much yarn you tie on your string to quiet, quieten that bow down you're doing a couple of things that you need to be aware of and you're keeping the back of your mind if you're shooting way, uh, uh, an arrow that is way too light that, that for tuning the purposes of that bow uh, you, in essence what you're doing is you're dry firing that bow or almost dry firing that bow. So for the sake of the life of the bow, you, you certainly don't want to uh, try to tune arrows to your bow that are too light, trying to chase speed, trying to get five or 10 feet a second more or whatever it is. Uh, I, you know, I, I have no idea what that gap is between a 400 grain arrow and a 650 or 700 grain arrow, what the difference would be in feet per second. It might be five, it might be 20. I don't know. But what I can tell you is, is if you want your bow to survive very long, don't be so concerned with chasing speed uh, versus properly tuning. Uh, the, the, the properly tuned arrow is most efficient, uh, meaning if it's, it's got enough weight to absorb the, 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 the pressure of the bow trying to return to brace, okay, without overly stressing the, 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 the tips of the bow and the limbs of the bow when it returns all the way to brace, okay? Uh, these are, that's a very important thing that a lot of people overlook. Uh, some people like the convenience of carbon arrows and aluminum arrows for that matter, because you know, you can put an insert and you change your tips out and whatever else. And that's great. That is, that is awesome. And it's, and it's a very good practice. I, I do it myself sometimes. What I will tell you is that you may have your arrows spined fairly well, and they may be flying good for you. But if your arrow is underweight, you are not doing yourself any justice and you're certainly not doing your bow any justice. So, that is the probably the most expensive fix is trying to find an arrow that's a little heavier spined, okay, whether it's carbon or whatever, in order to beef up the front of the arrow, meaning 
a heavier insert, heavier point, or a combination of, of both of those to get, to get the total grain weight of the arrow up where you're not over the long run damaging your bow. And or, I mean, the, the one thing, bad thing that can happen is you could break your string at some point. The worst case scenario is, is you destroy your bow. Now, I'm not trying to put fear in people about, you know, their bow blowing up in their hands or anything like that, but it's a definite possibility. Uh, what I am trying to stress here is, is for the, for the sake of the longevity of your bow, especially if you shoot a lot, uh, if you're shooting arrows that are too light, and as far as weight goes, if you're shooting arrows like that in a bow, you, you are eventually going to probably, and it might take a very long time, but you're going to do some damage to that bow and you're going to shorten the life of the bow. Uh, I mean, these bows are actually, they're wood and fiberglass. Uh, it, you know, wood is wood. I mean, there's only so much fiberglass can do. Uh, so you're eventually going to create a problem. Now, that that being said, there is a much cheaper way uh, to help with with uh, uh, with string noise, uh, but not in lieu of shooting the correct arrow. Uh, you, you need to get that arrow weight up. Don't be afraid. If you're shooting a 50-pound bow, don't be afraid to go up 550, 600 grains. Don't be afraid to do that because I've already proven it to myself and, uh, you know, time and time and time again that, you know, a 550, 600 grain arrow in a 50 pound bow is absolutely le lethal and it penetrates well with all the other things, you know, sharp broadheads and so on. So don't worry, don't worry too much about that. Now you could go to extremes and get up in 900 grains or something and then, and you start getting into diminishing returns again. Uh, but I, I do hope that you, you take what I'm saying to heart here is arrows that are too light are first of all definitely causing string noise and bow noise when you're shooting it uh, and on the very high to top end of the scale you're probably going to eventually do some damage to your bow. So anyway, uh, like I said I make my own strings and when I, if I do put string silencers on a bow uh, sometimes I don't. In fact, a business, a lot of times I don't. I have a, I have a couple of recurves. I don't use string silencers on them, and they are, as far as I'm concerned, they're de deadly quiet. Uh, but uh, what I do, and it's a very cheap option, okay, uh, as far as economics go, this is the cheapest route to go. I would not start with putting string silencers. I would start with getting your arrows tuned properly and shooting the proper weight and then if you want to go even further take another step further if you're just that worried about the noise your bow's making I would look at this little option uh, basically uh, you can go to any hobby lobby or one of those type craft stores or whatever that sells a little bit because it's hard to find I think at Walmart places like that they don't have like 100% wool yarn okay uh, wool yarn seems to last longer. Uh, it seems to be a little, little better yarn than just these other man-made materials and stuff like that. Uh, that's the reason why I use it uh, when I do make a string silencer. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you real quick what I do here. This is a small pair of channel locks, okay, uh, and it's very, very simple, very, very simple. Uh, let me, let me cut off a little piece of this real quick. Okay, <laughs> you, you, you just need a, you'll need a, a little small length of yarn, you know, whatever, six feet or something like that. And this, this small pair, this small pair of channel locks, you, you can see that it's just a little bit over an inch right here uh, where the handles kind of dip down. And really and truly, all you have to do is just hold one end of it with your finger on it like that and wrap it around 20, 25 times, something like that. Okay. And what you end up with is something that looks like this. Okay. Now, it's pretty simple. Uh, before you get to this stage right here, what you want to do is take your bow. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm sure that some, someone, uh, the, the way they learned how to do it, it, it's and it works for them, and that's great. But to me. 
having the, the string silencer, whatever it's made out of, way down on the strings, like say halfway between the tip of the bow and where you're knocking the arrow, uh, I'm sure there's a, a little bit of performance loss there. I don't know what it is, whether it's one feet per second or 10. I have no idea. I just couldn't stand to have something like that right in front of my face right here while I'm trying to shoot shoot my bow. So what I do is uh, typically I go about you know about that far, maybe you know that's about 10 inches from from here to here on both ends. Okay, and while you have the bow strung. Uh, you want to take your little tape or something and measure over here, take you a black sharpie or something and mark your 10 inches on both ends and then uh, unstring the bow, obviously. And uh, so once you get to that point, you've got your bow string marked. Uh, you got your bow string marked and everything else and, you, and you've got your little, your little wrap done. All you simply do is you, is you slide it off and this is what you end up with. Just a little... You know, it's looped on both ends. Pretty simple. When your bow's unstrung, you, uh, you, you open the strands up of your bow and you slip this in, okay, and, and where you have it marked, and you do the same thing on the other end. Now, once you string the bow, you'll have, you'll have loops on this side and loops on this side, all right? Now, you be, be careful. Don't stick a pocket knife or something in there. Don't do that. Go in, go in your wife's sewing room or whatever get her scissors or something like that and you can stick the blade of the scissors through those loops and just make one little cut on both sides and you're done you just start shooting your bow and what that does after you shoot your bow five or ten times it makes that I don't know if you can see it very well uh, it's about you know it's fluffed up right now but it makes a it's about Oh, inch and inch and a quarter, inch and a half tall, and probably oh, inch and a quarter in diameter. Okay, makes a neat little, makes a neat little string silencer. All right, it's not huge, it's not heavy, uh, but it does, and it does make a difference. It does make a difference in the way the bow sounds. How much quieter it actually is, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a decimal meter or anything like that. But it does, it does do something, it, and, I, and I use them sometimes. Uh, most of the time, or a lot of the time, not most of the time, but a lot of the time I don't even worry about it because I know that my bows are not so ungodly loud that it would make a, a bit of difference, all right? And that's just my opinion. I, I don't think that you need, but I, you definitely don't need a ball of yarn on there as big as my fist on both ends uh, because... Again, in my opinion, the more stuff you add to that string of that bow, you are decreasing the performance of the bow. Uh, the least amount of stuff that you have on there, the better. I mean, it's just, it's just. Uh, I think there is some velocity that you might gain or lose there, whether or not you use them or not. I don't. I can't imagine it being a huge amount. But the most important message of this uh, this uh, video is understand that you are certainly sucking the life out of your bow, literally, if you are shooting arrows that are too light for your bow. Again, arrows that are too light is bad news. They are loud and they are potentially dangerous to your bow over time, okay? And or your string. I mean, it could break your string even. Uh, so that's the, that's the key I'm trying to put Thank you. Make sure your arrows are tuned and heavy enough. Make sure your brace height is in that in that zone where it sounds the best. And then, if you want to add just a little bit more, use this little simple technique I got right here, and I I can almost guarantee you that it's going to come be a, uh, a successful, uh, uh, or it would be better uh, than what you what you've have been having problems with. Uh, some bows are just inherently loud due to design, okay? There's not a lot, there's not a whole lot you can do to that. But what I would caution you against doing is keep adding things to your bow limbs and keep adding things to your string trying to mitigate that because what you end up doing 
is you've lost everything that you thought you gained with this fancy bow you bought. So uh, keep that in mind, guys, and uh, I hope this helps. Um, if uh, you guys want to hear, any, you know, talk about anything else as far as uh, you know, string noise and string, you know, the way the way the, uh, the way I build them, uh, stuff like that. Feel free to ask questions. I've had some good questions about some of the other videos. They asked me uh, uh, to explain myself a couple of times, and they also ex asked uh, real direct questions about, you know, which one do you think is the best? And I always encourage people to experiment with them, you know, with experiment on their own. And when they get to a point where they're stuck, uh, those are those are real questions that someone with with some more experience may be able to help them with. And that's what these videos are all about, is to try to help people understand the dynamic of the bow and arrow and the person shooting it. Uh, that's all this is. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I want to try to help people, and that's that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm starting to get more and more subscribers, and people are asking more and more questions. And I and I am as long as I have time, and I'm able, and I'm uh, you know I, I'm willing to share whatever I can with you guys and try to share some uh, tips and tricks. As a matter of fact. Uh, uh, in the future, I've, I've already kind of started thinking about a couple of tips and tricks videos. Uh, some, of, a lot of it's very basic stuff. Uh, a lot of it's already on YouTube. Uh, but uh, since this is pretty much a, a uh, bow hunter elk type videos is what I'm trying to do here. Uh, people may tune in and hear something on one of my videos they hadn't heard before. So that's that's the whole point. That's that's why I'm here. So anyway, be safe with your bows, guys. Don't shoot arrows that are too light for your bow, and don't get over, don't get discouraged. Make sure you've got your bow tuned with proper arrows, proper base height, and then if you want to add a little something to your string to quiet it down just a little bit more, use this little technique that I showed you all ago, and I, and I think that you'll be uh, pretty surprised uh, with the results. So anyway. Okay, guys, well, thank you again for tuning in to my videos, and uh, got any questions or comments, always feel free to get down there in that comment box and, and let me hear them, and I'll try to do what I can to answer your questions. So you guys have a great, great evening, and uh, shoot straight.